All right, I have notes today, so I'm cheating a little bit, and I'm not entirely sure how long this video is going to be, so if you need to watch it in snippets, I would understand that. But uh, welcome to Faith Like Jesus, and um, what uh, I'll just reiterate to you is that uh, I think as we just do our best to strive to be disciples of Jesus, it is uh, impressed upon us not just to have faith in him, which we do, of course, and I think that is the beginning of our journey. But eventually, as he is our teacher, and not just, he is Lord, he is Savior, but not just that, also teacher. And so, as we have faith in him, and, but then as we learn from him, we begin to have faith like him. So, it's, it's, a, it's an evolution of faith, if you will. It's a journey of faith that takes us from having faith in Jesus to having faith like Jesus. So what I want to uh, share with you today revolves around the idea of discipleship and what it means to be a follower of Jesus at its very core. And so what I'm going to do is focus on a couple of commandments that are actually initially given to us in the Old Testament um, and how they are themselves the embodiment of who Jesus was. The first one comes from Deuteronomy 6. And it is this, listen, O Israel, the Lord, our God, the Lord uh, is our God, the Lord alone. And you must love the Lord, your God with all your heart, all your soul and all your strength. And you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands I'm giving you today. In fact, he says, then I want you to repeat them again and again to your children. So uh, in, in the law of Moses, Moses believed, Moses was taught, inspired to tell us by God himself that we should uh, hold up the Lord our God as the only God. And not only that should we regard him as the only God, but that we should, with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, pour our love into him. Um, the next command come, I want to share with you actually comes out of Leviticus chapter 19, and it is simply this, verse 18 do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against a fellow Israelite, but love your neighbor as yourself. I'm the Lord. And so uh, <clears throat> here this is at the end in Leviticus uh, chapter 19 of a chain of commands where the law is teaching us how to love and respect each other. And here kind of tying it all together is this idea that we often call the golden rule, which is love your neighbor as yourself, or sometimes we'll say, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And so um, why these two commandments? Well, these two commandments for a reason. Um, they are presented in the Gospels by Jesus himself as, as a part of his teaching as being the most important things that his followers can obey. Um, he, he even says things like this, that all of the law, all of the prophets really hang and are, or are built from these two ideas. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Um, now, each of the Gospels present these um, in a different way. Um, so if you need to take a break or you want to come back to the video later, this will probably be a good place to do it because what I want to do is introduce to you how um, each of the Gospels presents the greatest commands in a different context and does so from uh, kind of the standpoint of how Jesus is interacting with the people that he's interacting with. It's a little bit different, sometimes the same context, but presented in a little bit of a different way depending on uh, how Jesus is teaching um, or maybe what he's teaching. So I want to start with Matthew's gospel, and I want to look here. Um, Matthew's gospel says this, when the Pharisees heard that he'd silenced the Sadducees with his reply, they met together to question him. And one of them, an expert in the religious law, tried to trap him with this question and said, Teacher, which is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? Now I want to pause here to, to, to kind of make a point about teaching. Somebody once uh, used this analogy with me in regards to, you know, teaching your kid how to change a flat tire. Um, it was said, you know, there's a couple of ways to do it. One way is... You have a flat tire and you just do it with your student or your kid in your presence and you let them watch you. Maybe this 
from a first time perspective, this is a great way to do it. You would say to your kid, all right, I'm gonna fix the flat this time. I want you to watch me. I want you to see what tools I use. I want you to see how I do this so that next time um, we can kind of move to the next level. And so what Jesus does here is actually pretty much give these people in a nutshell the answer to the question. Um, what is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? And Jesus just flat out gives an answer. Verse 37, Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second one, he says, is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. So some of us, I think, are at a point in our relationship with Jesus where we just need him to, to teach us and tell us directly the answers to life's questions. And, uh, and I think that's a great teaching tool. Sometimes you just have to, to, to flat out tell people which way is up. Uh, and so Jesus here very clearly just gives them, hey, these are the two greatest commandments. You've asked a question. I'm going to give you straight up the answer. Now I want you to look at the Gospel of Mark. One of the teachers of religious law was standing there listening to the debate and he realized that Jesus had answered well and so he asked, of all the commandments, which is the most important? And Jesus replied. Again, Jesus is kind of giving the answer, but I want you to see how the interaction goes. Jesus replied, the most important commandment is this. Listen, O Israel, the Lord our God is one, the one and only Lord. And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. The second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. No commandment is greater than these. And the teacher of the law replied and, and, and said, Well said, teacher. You have spoken the truth by saying that there is only one God and no other." And I know it is important to love him with all my heart and all my understanding and all my strength and to love my neighbors myself. This is more important than to offer all the burnt offerings and sacrifices required in the law. And then realizing how much the man understood, Jesus said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And after that, no one dared to ask him any questions. So I want you again to kind of look at this interaction from just a teaching perspective for a moment as Jesus is asked the question, and then he answers it. But then there's this dialogue that continues where the person who is responding affirms what Jesus says, and then Jesus encourages that in him by saying, friend, you are not far from the kingdom of God. Um, but I do want to point out, he says, uh, you're not far from, which means not quite there yet. Now, I'm going to tell you, I don't think it was a man's lack of intelligence or lack of spiritual mindedness or even a, a, a failure to understand the law of Moses that, that had him still not yet quite at the kingdom. Um, in fact, we're going to get to what was it that was, what was it that made him not quite there yet? Um, we're going to get to that actually when we get to the Gospel of John. Um, what wasn't anything that this man had failed at? What I want to point out is, some of us are on a journey where, by God's Spirit, you know, He draws out of us um, a response, and, and then by His Spirit, He affirms and says, you're, you're almost there. You're, you're really, really close. Now, I want to go to the Gospel of Luke and, and see how it's even different still. This is uh, in the Gospel of Luke. One day, an expert in religious law stood up to test Jesus by asking him this question. Teacher, what should I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus replied, what does the law of Moses say? How do you read it? You see the difference? Here, in, in Luke's context, Jesus doesn't even give the answer. What he does here is he draws the answer out of his student. Um, another way to teach a kid how to, how to fix a flat tire is after you've told him what to do or after you've shown him what to do, you put the tools in his hands and say, all right, I'm going to put these tools in your hands. I want to watch you fix it. Um, and then, of course, if you're a good teacher, you'll respond and you'll give correction and you'll give encouragement along the way. But you draw the answer out of the student himself. And that's what Jesus is doing here. He's drawing 
an answer out of the person who's asked the question. What does the law of Moses say? How do you read it? And so the man answered and said, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. And the next verse says, Right! Jesus told him, Do this and you will live. And so then the man wanted to justify his actions, and so he asked Jesus, Who is my neighbor? Ah, and so now this discussion from a teaching standpoint begins to open up how, not just what are we learning here, but how do we apply this in our everyday kind of life? And Jesus goes on to teach, um, I'm pretty sure he goes on to teach the story of uh, the Good Samaritan and show what it really means to live this out. So from a teaching perspective, Here's my question for you. How is the Spirit of God drawing out of you? Um, how is he beginning to put you in places where love God and love others begins to be a daily application for you? But now I want to go to the Gospel of John because John really turns this the greatest commandments idea um, on its head a little bit. If you go to the Gospel of John, Jesus never quotes the Deuteronomy passage. He never quotes the Leviticus passage. But what he does is in the upper room with his disciples, he gives them what's called the new command. Dear children, I will be with you only a little longer. This is in John 13. And as I told the Jewish leaders, you will search for me, but you can't come where I'm going. So now I'm giving you a new commandment. Um, I think it's so important that we catch the profoundness of what Jesus is doing in the Gospel of John. In fact, I would tell you, I think what he's doing is he's answering the question, what does Jesus mean in the other synoptics when he says, you are not far from the kingdom of heaven? What does he mean when he's teaching uh, the guy who asks, well, who is my neighbor and how do I live that out? And what Jesus is doing here is he's taking all of the greatest commands, Deuteronomy 6, um, Leviticus 19, what, what is being said in all the synoptics, what, is tr what Jesus is trying to draw out of people in all the synoptic stories, and he sums it up in a very practical and new way right here in John 13 when he says, a new commandment I give you, love each other just as I have loved you, you should love each other, and your love for one another will prove to the world that you're my disciples. Okay, so how does John flip it on its head? Two things I want to share with you that I think uh, make John's gospel kind of at the, the deepest end of the pool, uh, the deepest end of discipleship, the, uh, the most significant level of, of having moved from faith in Jesus to having faith like Jesus. Faith, faith in Jesus says, okay, Jesus, when you say, tell me to love God and love others, I believe you. Faith like Jesus says, okay, Jesus, I am now following you into a daily routine of living this out, loving God and loving other people just like you did. And so here's two things where Jesus kind of flips it on its head. One of them is he combines them. When Jesus says a new commandment I give you, love one another as I have loved you, what he's giving us is a reflection of both divine love and human love love as they now come together in the man Jesus Christ. If you noticed in the Synoptic Gospels, the greatest command, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Jesus doesn't bring that up in the Gospel of John. Why is that? Well, because he is God and he's already shown us how to love and that's why he says, I want you to love people as I have loved you. Um, another thing to look at in the Gospel of John is the fact that John is a very incarnational theologian, and so are we, of course. But what I mean to say is we, we are, as the church, the temple of the Holy Spirit. We are the incarnation, if you will, of Jesus. We are his body, collectively, not, in, not, not individually, but collectively. We are the body of Christ. We are the embodiment of the Spirit. And so think of it this way. To love each other because we are, as the temple of God, we are, in essence, loving God when we love each other. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. So 
The expression, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, can be carried out in the way that we actually love each other. Isn't that awesome? And then, of course, he, he ups the ante a little bit when he says, I want you to love each other not as you love yourself, because the truth is until Jesus came and died on the cross, the best we could do was to love other people the way that I love myself. Of course, the problem with that is I'm not always able to love myself very well. And as a result, I'm not always able to love other people very well. But when I use Jesus as a model and I see that his love wasn't, uh, was completely self-sacrificial, Jesus is able to raise the bar. So he doesn't say, love your neighbor as you love yourself. He says, love your neighbor as I have loved you. That's why this is a new command. And it takes the greatest commands, love God and love others, and it wraps it up into one thing, understanding how God loves us completely, fully, unconditionally, self-sacrificially, and taking that love and loving others with it. Next time somebody asks you what are the greatest commands, I want you to think about it from this perspective. If you answer, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself, that's well said, and it is not far from the kingdom. But to answer from within the kingdom is to answer the way Jesus, I think, teaches it in John, and that is, what, is, what are the greatest commands? Well, there is a new commandment, because love God and love others is now wrapped up in this. Love each other as I have loved you, says our Lord, our Savior. And when we do that, when we begin to move that, this is the teacher drawing out of us the same kind of love that he shared with God and that he shares with the world, that he gives to the world. This is moving from having faith in Jesus to having faith like Jesus. Anyway, that's it for today. I hope you were blessed by it. Uh, sorry it's so long. Wow, 17 minutes. Love you guys. I'm going to be done.